When it comes to bending gender stereotypes, seahorses and their relatives would have to be one of the most extreme examples. As a general rule, mothering is more common than fathering, but many different fish swap the traditional roles of mums and dads, and it's the males that do the parenting. And seahorses take this a step further. They're the only animals where the males get pregnant. Now, prior to mating, a male and female pair perform a highly stylized dance. It starts by nodding to one another. And then they swim back and forth following one another, stopping to intertwine their tails. Then swimming commences again. They join together side by side and rise up through the water. The male's pouch opens and they sink back towards the seafloor. The female moves in to examine his open pouch. The pair face one another, their abdomens touch, and it's at this time that she transfers her eggs across to his pouch. And as her eggs pass into the pouch, he releases sperm to fertilize them. He'll incubate their embryos for the next month until they're ready for birth. Now, seahorse pregnancy is incredibly complex, and remarkably, there's lots of parallels with ours. Seahorse dads provide within their pouch nutrients for their embryo's development, like energy-rich fats and calcium to allow the embryos to build tiny skeletons. The dads remove the embryo's wastes, like carbon dioxide and nitrogen, and they produce antibacterial and antifungal molecules to protect their developing embryos from infections. Just like in us, hormones like oestrogen are involved in producing the cascade of signals through pregnancy and that lead to birth. With about a week to go before birth, the seahorse dads produce hormones, hatching signals, to prepare their embryos. These signals cause the embryos to hatch out of the thin-walled membrane that they've been developing within. And once free of this membrane, they swim and move freely inside the dad's pouch. The embryos now take up more room and the dad's pouch stretches. At birth, the dad's pouch undergoes muscular contractions as his young, called fry, emerge from his pouch. So male seahorses perform many of the same functions that occur in pregnancy and birth in females of other animals. But this is surprising because during pregnancy for female mammals, reptiles and other fish, the embryos are inside the female's reproductive tract. But seahorse dads don't have a female reproductive tract. So for them, pregnancy has evolved entirely independently of how we think of pregnancy in all other animals. Yet many of the same processes and even many of the same genes control both male and female pregnancy. So it's a remarkable display of convergent evolution. So seahorse dads make excellent mums. So why be such a good dad? Well, for fish, like the seahorse, the bigger and fatter the female, the more eggs she can produce. So if she's freed from looking after their young, she can travel and find more high quality food. Whereas the amount of sperm produced by the male seahorse isn't constrained by the food he can find. So that here fathering makes sense. As if he's the stay at home parent with limited access to extra resources, this won't limit the amount of young the pair can produce. Whereas if the female can get more resources, she may even be able to produce a second or even third clutch of eggs. But the size of the male's brood pouch limits the number of embryos he can look after. And he only has room for one clutch at a time. But if she times the production of the next batch of eggs to coincide with birth of their previous clutch, there'll be still time enough to have a second clutch in that season. But this requires the male and the female to synchronize the egg production, laying and gestation. So it only works if they synchronize the timing perfectly with one another. And the longer the pair are partnered, the better they are at doing just that, and the more young they can produce. In fact, some seahorses like the white seahorse are monogamous. Pairs can partner for a lifetime. So the purpose of their dancing? Well, perhaps the dancing helps the pair synchronize their physiology, getting that timing just right, so that the partners can maximize the number of young they can produce.